In this video, we're going to talk about decoders and demultiplexers. As the name implies, these are doing the opposite of what the encoder and multiplexers were doing that we discussed in the earlier video. So let's go ahead and start with the demultiplexer. A demultiplexer is uh, a device that basically takes in one input. Let's let's go ahead and draw this. Let's say you do a, a one to eight. You could have one to four. Um, it's it's really really kind of uh, the most common ones are either one to four or one to eight. We're going to draw the one to eight. So you had one input coming in here, um, and this input can be connected to one of eight output in this case. This, this is a one to eight um, demultiplexer, demux for short. Um, so you would have an output zero and an output uh, seven, and of course you will have output one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, so uh, you could select which which output the input is connected to through a three-bit binary input, which are called select two, select one, and select zero, where zero is the least significant bit. So for example, if I were to say one one zero, this basically says that go ahead and take the input. Let me use a different color. It basically says take the input and connect it to output six. Okay, the other outputs are not connected to anything. And this is called a one to eight demultiplexer, relatively common. Most of these demultiplexer will have some control, like enable bit, like an enable bit or other control in here where you have to read the data sheet to make sure you're connecting it correctly. One of the very, so the variation of, I'm sorry, the variation on this thing is called a decoder. And one of the very common decoders that are used are, is something called a three to eight decoder. And that we have a part number 74 LS138. And its job is slightly different than the multiplexer, although you could say a decoder is a demultiplexer as well. But the job of this is to go ahead and accept three input, let's say A, B, and C. And depending on the values on these output, you have one of these become active. You can have these devices be active low or active high. So the output is going to be output 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So you have 8 output, and this is a binary 0 to 7 affecting each one of them. Much like all the other devices, there's going to be... Um, control bits that you have to set either high or low to make it operational. Let's go ahead and take a minute, now that we've kind of had the overall view of what these things are, let's take a minute, go through the data sheet for 74LS138, get a kind of familiar with the, more of the details of how it operates. So let's go ahead and take a look at this part. This part is a, as you can notice, just like every other thing, these, these, each one of these um, devices uh, or uh, these uh, um, data sheets are, are able to, are, are intended to cover multiple uh, chips. So, so we need to be uh, uh, careful what data we are reading. So the one we are interested in is a, a 74 LS138 and We'll, we'll take a look at it. So there are both two in here. The one we are interested in is the one to the left is the 138. It's configured this way. These little bubbles say these are active low. So when you select them, they're going to go to zero. When you deselect them, they're going to go to high. And here A, B, and C are the bits that are selecting. Pay attention to G1, G2B, and G1, G2A. These are the bits that would enable and disable it. And by looking at these bubbles, you can tell that G2A, G2B must be low, G1 must be high. But we need to, just to be sure, we need to go also take a look at the data. I did like to look at the tables of what to say and what not to say. So, the, so this is what it is as far as, as far as its pin configuration is concerned. I was hoping to show you, let's see if we can find, okay, here we go. So this one specifically, is designed to operate with 138 and what it does it says as long as 
G1 is high, L, G1, G2 is low ground, then C, A, B, and C will control which bet, so which bet is low. So for example, if I set A, B, C as input as zero, then only output zero will be low. If I set it to one, then one would be low and on and on and on, okay? And then they have some comments down here of what the symbols mean. But once you look at once you look at the functional table, you have a pretty good grasp of it. Yeah, of course, as we've talked about before, as you get into more of this design, the propagation delay, which is all outlined here, is important. The amount of current is consumed, power consumptions, output current, input current, and all of that becomes an important topic to pay attention to. Okay, so that brings uh, this uh, part of video to an end where we've talked about um, uh, demultiplexers and decoders.